This is the Hike and Bike Xion 2 presented and I'll be testing it for user friendliness, spaciousness, features, quality and loads more. I bought this tent from Amazon, here's what the outer cardboard packaging looks like and of course, here's me unboxing it. This is what it looks like brand new from Amazon, it comes with an outer plastic wrapping. Now let me take everything out, lay everything out and let's see what we get. Here we have the green rainfly, the black tent body, a gear loft, a footprint and a carry bag, a single pole ulcer and another small bag, the bigger overall carry bag right here, and finally stakes, guidelines and a stake pusher in another separate bag. I'll take everything out of the carry bags and here's what everything looks like. If you're wondering, this is the single pole and I also got 12 stakes, this is the stake pusher and here are the four guidelines. As for the setup, first things first, here's a full time lapse of me setting up the entire two person hike and bike Zion on my own, and it usually takes me about eight to eight and a half minutes to do so. This isn't the setup video, this is the review video, so if you need like better instructions on how to set this up, you can check out this other video on my channel. For now, I'll just give you the gist of the setup process as well as some pros and cons that I can think of along the way. The first pro is that the footprint is provided, and this is one of the only tents I bought that comes with a footprint. The tent body goes over this footprint and after that, there's a single pole that you've got to put together. The ends of the pole go through both the four grommets of the tent body and the four grommets of the footprint, which is really nice because the footprint fits perfectly. And here's the next pro, there aren't any snaggy pole sleeves for this tent, instead we have these user friendly pole clips that I could clip on using just one hand. Now there's a short pole on top of the tent that can be rotated on the spot, and this is to be connected to the last two grommets at the top as well. After that, grab the rain flag and drape it over the tent. Then secure it to the pole with these straps on the underside of the rain flag. This is the first con, I don't quite like these because they're not as user friendly and I prefer velcro instead. Then to further secure the rain fly, there are four of these super quick rain fly buckles at the bottom and that's another pro. And finally just stake down and guy up the entire tent. Here's another couple of pros, the stakes provided aren't your standard shepherd hook stakes, there are these V-stakes instead. And also, I actually had enough stakes for the entire tent. However, for the cons, there weren't enough guidelines for the two widths of the tent. I tried to stake them down using just the provided stakes, but it didn't hold very well, so I needed to grab two of my own guidelines before I could finish setting up this tent. Also, I found that the stake loops aren't elastic, which I would have preferred, so you can tell from the tent that it's not quite as taut as it could have been. If you need a lighter setup, here's a quick look at what it's like. So it's just the footprint first, the pole secured to the footprint next, and finally the rain fly on top of the pole and the footprint. The full instructions are in my separate setup video as well. Basically there's no tent body at all, here's what the ultralight setup looks like. It'll take about 5 minutes or so to set up, and this setup weighs about 4.3 pounds, so not exactly ultralight. Taking down and packing the entire tent away back into the carry bag usually takes me about 6.5 minutes, I had no issues at all, the carry bag was big enough for me, and I go through the entire process in my separate setup video as well. The peak height inside this two person Zion is about 41 inches, which is an okay height to me but it's definitely not the tallest I've seen. In this shot, there's no mashes or pad, and I was able to sit upright at the peak height with quite a bit of leftover room. Now here's what a 4 inch thick pad looks like inside the tent, and this is the maximum pad height I'd recommend for taller people. As for myself, I'm fine with a 6 inch thick mattress, here's what it looks like, with maybe about 2 inches of headroom left under the peak height. For me, it's definitely still comfy, but that's because I'm not very tall and I wouldn't recommend this if you're much taller. And of course, since this is a dome tent, the height gets much lower as you move along the lengths of this tent. But one great thing about this tent is that you get the peak height throughout the width of the tent and that's because the two side walls are almost vertical. Remember the short pole at the top of the tent during the setup process? It actually holds the tent body up nicely with the top two grommets giving you vertical sidewalls. Here's what the sidewall of the tent looks like from the inside of the tent. Notice how it's vertical from the top to the ground. 
Now, this is what it looks like from the outside of the tent, and again, notice how it's really almost vertical. I also noticed that the width of this tent, so the head and foot of this tent, are kind of vertical as well, thanks to the pole structure underneath, which looks like this. Now, here are my personal measurements of the inner tent base. The length comes in at about 88 inches. I think this is pretty good. It's long enough to fit anyone that's 6 feet, maybe even slightly more. You can also sleep a little more diagonally across the tent if you're using this by yourself. As for the width, it comes in at about 54 inches, and I honestly would have liked it to be a little bit wider when I tried to inflate a slightly smaller than queen-sized mattress which comes in at about 80 by 56 inches. Even that was too big for this tent. It pushes out at the sides of the tent, like so. So I definitely would have liked this tent to be a little bit wider. The length is great though, and there's still a little leftover space. If you're planning to fit just two regular sleeping pads inside, then there'll be no problem at all. You'll get plenty of leftover space not just at the width of the tent, but also at the length of the tent. On top of the inner tent area, you'll also get some outer vestibule area. With the rainfly over the tent, I recommend zipping the vestibule up before staking it down because this makes your zipping experience much better with no snags at all, whether zipping or unzipping. In fact, these are all real-time clips that you see on the screen here. This two-person dion comes with not one, but two vestibule areas which are exactly the same on both sides. The longest width of each vestibule is about 28 inches, and I could fit my flip-flops and my tripod in each vestibule, still with leftover space. Each vestibule also comes with two different loops at the bottom, so you can stick down either loop, either the left or the right, whichever you prefer, and this allows you to open either side of the vestibule. Or if it's not raining and if you want easier access into your tent, you can unstake the vestibule completely and tie it up with these two toggles right here. And this will give you access to the two doors, one door at each length of the tent. And both doors are exactly the same. I found the zipping experience to be pretty good also with no snags and as always, all the clips that you see on the screen here are in real time. I'll show you clips not just from the outside, but from the inside as well. And each door has two zippers. Here's a close-up of what they look like, and I don't think they're branded because there's no engraving or anything on them. When the doors are closed, the entire thing is just mesh, which is really great for ventilation, and here's a close-up shot of the mesh. On the other hand, when the doors are opened, each of them measure about 44 inches in length by 30 inches in width, so I think they're really quite big. It was actually pretty easy for me to get in and out of the tent through either of the doors, especially because I'm not very tall. And also, to keep the doors open, there's this toggle by the side of each door to hold the fabric together. There are four pockets in this two-person hike and bike tent, one in each corner like this. Each pocket comes in this triangle shape and measures about 9 by 6 inches, which is not very big. Here's what it looks like with my hand in the shot as well. As for lantern loops, there's one right at the top of the tent for some lighting at night, and there's also another four loops around it, and this is for the provided gear loft. So here are the dimensions of the gear loft. It comes in this sort of diamond shape and measures about 16 inches in length and also 16 inches in width. The gear loft comes with these toggles, one at each corner, which you can use to hang it up, and the toggles go into the small loops at the top of the tent. Here's what they look like together. With the gear loft in place, there's only enough space for a smallish lantern, nothing too big. Apart from all these storage options, there aren't any others, and there's also no power port as well. As for the heavy rain test, of course I tested this tent as well, but there's just too much info that I had to go through, so I made a completely separate rain test video that you can check out if you want to. Here's everything that I go through in that video. If you're buying this tent, I highly recommend you watch the rain test, because spoiler alert, this tent is really not that great in rain. One thing this tent does really well in the rain though is the built-in rainfly vents. I actually left the two vents at the two sides of the tent open throughout the entire rain test and I found that these vents didn't leak at all. I really liked that the vents are facing almost vertically downwards, which really helps prevent rain from getting in. 
This is really great, especially because these vents can't be accessed from the inside of the tent. Here's a close-up shot of what the vents look like from the inside. Here's all the mesh, and there's basically no way I can reach the vents from the inside. One thing I didn't quite like though, was that the kickstand of the vent is kind of bendy, which I've never seen before, but I guess it's not too big an issue overall. Apart from the rainfly vent, here's a couple of other points that I want to talk about when it comes to rainy day ventilation. First, I usually like to have all around ventilation where the rainfly can be pulled away from the tent body at all four sides. So remember the two vestibules of this tent, one in each length? I was able to pull the rainfly about 28 inches away from the tent body because of the vestibules. And for the width of this tent, I was able to attach my own guidelines because remember, not enough guidelines were provided and only then could I guide the width of the tent out. This gave me a small vent at each width that's about 11 and a half inches away from the tent body. And second, I like to look at the gap between the bottom of the rainfly and the ground. The gap at the lengths of the tent weren't too big, but the gaps at the widths were pretty huge. I mean, they're so big, I can pretty much kind of look out from inside the tent. Here's what the left width of the tent looks like, and here's what the right width of the tent looks like. So the problem here is that if the gap's big enough, water can backsplash into the tent, and there will be leaking in the heavy rain. Did this tent leak though? Well, that's why I recommend watching the rain test video before buying this tent. As for hot day ventilation, here's what the two-person hiking bike Zion looks like with the rain fly off. I really liked how much mesh there was on this tent. I think easily more than, I don't know, 80% of this tent is covered in mesh. On the width of the tent, anything above this is all mesh. On the length of the tent, anything above this is also all mesh. Basically, it's really well ventilated for hot summer days and also great for stargazing at night because you get 360 unblocked views all around the entire tent. Now, here's all the materials that are used to make this tent. The footprint is made of 63D polyester with a PU coating of 5,000 millimeters. The rain fly is also made of 63D polyester with the same waterproof coating, and the flooring and inner tent body are made of 63D polyester as well, but without a PU coating. The poles are 7000 series aluminum poles, the zippers I don't think are branded, but thankfully they're pretty snag free, and the mesh looks like micro mesh. Not exactly as smooth and silky as some of my other tents that also have this type of micro mesh, but at least the holes are smaller than regular mosquito netting. The V stakes are also 7000 series aluminum, and these strips on the vestibule are reflective at night. I found the stitching in this tent to be double stitched and generally okay for the most part, except for a couple of not so great areas with not so great stitching and just one loose thread. There were a couple of things I didn't quite like about this tent when it came to quality, but I'll go through that in the pros and cons section later. For now, the packed size of the two-person hiking bike Zion comes in at about 22 by 7.5 by 7 inches. Here's what it looks like beside a Coleman two-person sundown tent, as well as a 32-ounce Nalgene bottle. The carry bag comes with a really small hand strap at the back. This is the only way that you can carry it, and surprisingly, there's no shoulder strap or anything that I could use to sling over my shoulder for easy carry. As for the weight, everything altogether weighed about 6 pounds for me, so that's including the tent body and all the provided stakes and guidelines. Now, for what Hike and Bike calls the ultralight weight without the tent body. The rain fly with all the guidelines weighs 2.1 pounds, the pole and its bag weigh 1.2 pounds, the footprint alone without the bag weighs 0.63 pounds because I lost the bag, the 12 stakes in the bag weigh a about 0.35 pounds. I also lost the stick pusher, so the ultralight weight comes in at about 4.3 pounds. One of the biggest pros of this tent is the price. I found it to be really quite inexpensive. The one person version is now just slightly over 100 bucks and you also get a lifetime warranty with this tent. And the biggest reason why I found this tent to be great value for money is because you get a footprint with the tent and you don't have to pay a single cent for it. The footprint fits perfectly under the tent, it protects the base, and there's no need to do much cleaning afterwards for the tent body, which is really nice. Oh, and on top of that, you can use the footprint instead of the tent body, which is what Hike and Bike calls the ultralight setup, and it saves you close to two pounds in weight. I love this kind of versatility, it's awesome. 
Another pro to this tent is the vertical sidewalls, thanks to the short rotating pole at the top, and this really increases the livability inside the tent. And this tent also comes with a decent amount of space. It has a good length of 88 inches, kind of vertical end walls as well, so this tent can fit folks even taller than 6 feet. The base area comes in at exactly 33 square feet. Each vestibule has a base area of 8.6 square feet. So together, they're about 17.1 square feet. And this comes down to a total area of a whopping 50.1 square feet. Behind the two vestibules, you get two doors, which also means a whole ton of cross ventilation, provided there aren't too many bugs around. And when you take the rainfly off, there's tons of mesh for lots of hot day ventilation as well. And last but not least, for the pros, there's also a decent amount of storage for two people, or one person, whichever you prefer. Before we get into the cons, if you found this helpful so far, please help me hit that like button. It really helps this video out. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. As for cons, easily the biggest one is that this tent is not the best in rain, and that's because I found leaking in multiple places after my heavy rain test. I'll leave it at this for now, but again, I do highly recommend that you watch that separate rain test video that I published before you buy this tent. Also, the quality isn't the best that I've seen even compared to other budget tents that are about the same price. I think my biggest issue is that the rainfly and flooring are all pretty thin, coming in at just 63D polyester. Some of my other tents actually have up to 150D polyester floorings, which is much thicker. But maybe this was deliberately done this way to make the tent more lightweight? I'm honestly not too sure about this. Another con is that this tent seems to have quality control issues. Three reasons why. One, I found a footprint on my rain fly. Like what? I honestly can't tell if this was even brand new. Two, after unboxing the tent, when I was taking the footprint out, the tensioner just flew off the footprint carry bag. And three, I couldn't really get the rain fly as taut as I wanted to. Maybe it's a stitching issue or these stake loops not being elastic enough. So when I was filming this tent, some of my shots made this tent look pretty janky. I've never had issues like this for my other budget-friendly tents that are about the same price as well. And one more smaller con, I wouldn't exactly call this lightweight, it's not even half a pound lighter than a car camping tent like the Coleman 2 person Sunder. Overall, I think this hike and bike Zion has way more pros and cons. Here's a quick summary of the pros and here's a quick summary of the cons. But the thing is, the cons aren't that minor, honestly. Some of them are actually pretty big issues, and I was especially surprised at how badly it did in the rain. Even at its inexpensive price, I still think that there are other tents out there that perform better and offer more value for money. How do I know this? Well, I've bought and tested many budget tents under 100 bucks, so I summarized all my findings into a video, and when I'm done with that video, I'll put it up on the screen here, so do check it out. Thank you for watching this review, you're awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.